Rod and Refresh Faithful, welcome back to me, my predictions, the Nostradamus of this entire season, Daniel from Half Cocked High, how y'all doing? We just finished up season three, round one, and I dominated in my performance with a spectacular nine out of 16 correct predictions. I'm above 500, I'm going either to the wild card or the playoffs. Somebody who knows sports, let me know. But right now, we've gotta go straight to business. We're talking about round two. We got 16 folks, eight matches. This one's not gonna be spread out over four videos. We're gonna get right to the point, straight. Let's do this. Men versus movies versus Matthew V. Haynes. Griffin is like the Matt Ryan of this game. He can put up spectacular points and just dominate his opponents, get perfect scores all across the board, and he proved it in the first round. He's just got it all. He's got good listing, he's got the good perfect scores, and he can steal points from anybody. So, I'm sorry, but yeah, men versus movies. He's the number one seed for a reason. Next round, we've got Chandler Langley versus Joseph Lansdell. Before I say anything, Joseph Lansdell surprised me with his performance. It sounds bad to say, but I think he was underrated amongst all of us. And he pulled out a damn respectable performance. I could tell that he was studying some of the classic movies. Definitely a lot of comic book ones. And just shy of a couple perfect scores. So maybe it was the nerves, maybe it was just the inexperience of Rotten Fresh. But all in all, he's got raw material to work from. He's going up against Chandler Langley, who has proven time after time again, he's got a razor sharp memory. That man can pull out perfect scores out of his ass farther than anyone else I've seen. While he is underrated because he hasn't pulled off the kind of spectacular feats, I think Chandler is going to be a guy to really uh, struggle against in this. So, yeah, Chandler all the way on this one. This dude is scary. Next round, we've got Jerome Latimer from Flicks with the Dicks versus Howl's Hollywood Reviews. I'm going to go Jerome Latimer here. The way he was talking about movies, he's like, oh, I remember when this came out and the critics didn't like it, when he was talking about Ace Ventura. I feel like that sort of memory is a nice way to register yourself. Even with movies you don't know, if you know the general time period and the landscape of movies at that time, it'll help you figure out whether something that's rotten or fresh really fast, and from there can you go, okay, was this great or just good, or was this terrible or just kind of like, eh. It'll help you get closer to those perfect scores, and that, in round one, it'll definitely help widen the gap between a match. And so I noticed that from Jerome more than I did from Russell, even though Russell did put up a damn good performance. And I like what Mick Rock said, and I completely agree that Jerome Latimer's got that personality that can throw people off. So, I'm gonna go with it. Jerome Latimer. The next one... Ren Geekness versus Jafito's movie blog. Going against Ren Geekness is like going against the sun rising and setting every day. It's just not gonna happen. I'm sorry, Ren Geekness. He's just that guy. We move over to LC Screen Talk, my boy Larry. <laughs> versus Jared. Buckendall. Another close match because Jared put up a damn good performance. The very first episode of Rotten Fresh Season 3, Jared Buckendall does a TKO. But so did Larry. Larry does a TKO as well. And I'm going Larry with this one. Larry is unassuming, but he's got the knowledge. And he will drop it on you at a moment's instance. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. Maybe like a... Uh, 17-14 win for Larry, but yeah, I think Larry's gonna take this one. The next one is going to be Married Movie Reviews versus Casey Costley. This one was really tough for me to figure out, mostly because I think that Mike, while I'm gonna predict him to win, 
I don't think he's a steamroller. I don't think he's a men versus movies or Ren Geek in his, even though he puts up damn good points. I think Mike's performance very much reflects the competition he's going up against. So it's not quite a blowout. And with Rotten or Fresh, especially the last round, let's be honest, in the higher or lower round, for most of the movies that get brought up, do we know the actual score? And if we don't, then it's pretty much a coin toss, a 50-50 decider. Unless you know the actual score, it really much is just like a give-or-take feeling, and especially since Ryan and Cody like to throw in Jay Vader's, it feels more and more like a coin toss to decide who wins. So really, rounds one through three are the most important, and I really do think that Mike... Mike gets a couple more perfect scores than Casey did. So I think that's going to be the slightest edge. This is going to be one of the toughest matches to watch, and this is why it's the most anticipated for me. Next one is Zach Pope versus Amy from the movie Checklist. One that I'm excited to see because I underestimated Amy, and Amy surprised me. Amy did really well against Rama Screen, and I had voted that Rama Screen was going to go all the way, but that round, I could kind of tell around round one, like, oh, snap, Amy's got this. And if it were anybody else, I would say Amy's got a good shot. But it's Zach, and Zach's... Zach is Aaron Rodgers. Zach knows what he's doing. And Zach, I I think, somebody check me on this stat. I think Zach is undefeated. It feels bad to vote against Zach. You just can't. He's just that good at this game. But Amy, I've, I don't know. Amy's really smart. Amy's got a good berth of movies under her belt. Amy's definitely a smart player. She goes, uh, those special categories, she studies those well. And, I don't know, maybe... The only way I could really see Amy winning this one is if she's got, like, a phenomenal listing round. If the listing round is, like, nine or ten movies that just shoots her over the top, and then maybe the, you know, round four is kind of like a toss-up, if it goes in her favor, I think she might pull it, but the smart money is Zach here. I'll go with the 22 to 16. 22 to 16 spread on that one. And now, the last one. The most anticipated one. The exciting surprise of Rotten or Fresh for me. Jay Vader's versus Austin Burke. I had originally called The Real Talk to win that match, and that was a good match. It was a strong match. But I'll be damned if Austin Burke didn't surprise the hell out of me. If he didn't pull out so many perfect scores, if he didn't know what the hell he was talking about, damn, that dude just impressed me. And he's got the same qualities that I see in like your top people, your Ren Geekness, your Zach Pope, your Men vs. Movies. Honestly, ask me any day, and I'll flip this. Because Jay, I think, is unpredictable. Jay is one of those dudes that's been on the top echelon of Rotten or Fresh for a while. And I still think he's a tad underrated, just because he hasn't really pulled it off yet. He's basically <laughs> gotten to the red zone. He hasn't scored, but that drive, that initial drive is really, really good. He doesn't play poorly. He doesn't give up easy steals. And he doesn't predict uh, Rotten Tomato scores that are, like, out of left field. He won't say that Inglorious Bastards is a 20%, you know? And he knows right in the pocket where he needs to be, and so that game will help him play. I really do think it's the listing round. Round three is going to decide uh, this match, and for me, I think Jay Vaders just has the strength. And I still think he could probably take this whole tournament. At the end of round two, let's go back over my class of eight, which is Men vs. Movies. Chandler Langley, Jerome Latimer, Ren Geekness, LC Screen Talk, Married Movie Reviews, Zach Pope, and Jay Vaders. I'm looking at this class of eight, and I'm thinking, damn, this is, this is going to be a lot of fun. So, 
If you have your predictions for Rotten or Fresh, let me know all that in the comments below. Let me know why. Psychoanalyze these people, right? If you stuck around to the end, thank you very much for watching. Go ahead, like this video, subscribe to Halfcock, come see all the stuff we've got, our after credits reviews, my monthly Blu-ray hauls. Oh, uh, congratulations to Rudy for that new segment on the on his local TV show. If you haven't seen Rudy review movies on TV, on the news. He's getting more official by the minute. I'm gonna leave that, uh, I'm gonna leave the link to that story and that video down in the description. But yeah, congratulations, Rudy. Hoping you're getting one step closer to being the official movie critic for San Antonio. So, this has been Daniel from Halfcock, uh, Dallas's unofficial movie critic, and see you guys later. Bye.